Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm using the Simply Spring collection by Doodlebug to create 15 cards. There's a quick overview of the things that I plan to use to create those cards, and I'll also be bringing several pieces of cardstock from my stash. So here is a quick look at my thought process, kind of what I do to start organizing and preparing to create my cards. First, I kind of try to pair up some of these die cut pieces by colors or by theme per se, and then I go through and I pick out some of the die cut pieces from the chit chat collection or from the chit chat package and just kind of put together some sentiments that would go well with the images or some of those speech bubbles and then I can just start taking one set and just trying to line it up and see how it would look best. And this system seems to work best for me because when you start out looking at all those cardstock pieces, there's over a hundred pieces in one collection and it can get just a little bit overwhelming. So jumping right into uh, card one, I've used a stitched rectangle die. This one I believe is by MFT. And I've die cut one of the pattern papers from the collection. And then I used a really bright blue, a piece of cardstock for my background. I've taken the focal point element and I popped it up on some foam tape or rather fun foam and as well as the sentiment. And then I'm adhering the spring banners just directly to the panel. I'm trying to space them out so that it looks even on all of the sides. And then I can just adhere my focal point elements right into place. And that is the first card. The second card is the same design as the first, just different components. And here I'm showing you, uh, I typically will use white card bases and then I've cut the piece of green cardstock down to an A size panel. And then I've die cut a pattern paper using the same stitched rectangle die. And then I can just start adhering my components down. I decided to, for, at first I decided to adhere everything flat, then I changed my mind and I very carefully peeled up that spring sentiment and I'm just popping that up on some fun foam. And you can see where I've teared the pink paper a little bit, which is fine, I'll just adhere that sentiment over it. And then just to add a little bit of the embellishments, I'm adding some of the enamel dots from that same collection. So card three, I've taken a teal paper cardstock for the background and cut that down to an A2 size panel. And then I've picked out a couple of the different designs of the pattern paper and I've I've adhered those to the card base. Then I took a stitched oval die and I die cut the same cardstock as the background. And then I've adhered the sentiment and then I can pop my focal image in. I also added a little bird there in the corner and the speech bubble. For the fourth card, again, it's the same design as the third card except different components. The background is a pink piece of cardstock that I've cut down to an A2 sized panel and then the two paper pattern papers from the collection 
I've adhered a piece of black cardstock in between. I think that just gave it a nice separate or a distinct look. And then the sentiment, I'm also adding a black mat to the back of it. And I'm just trimming that down using my scissors. Once I have that trimmed, I can go ahead and adhere that into place. And then my focal point image, I've added fun foam and I'm adhering that directly down. And that is the fourth card. For the fifth card, I've already adhered the bright uh, blue background panel to my card base. And then I took a panel that's slightly smaller than an A2 sized panel and adhered it directly down. And then my pink paper, I've added a mat, a black piece of mat to it. And then I can just start adhering my components. I've got the sentiment popped up on fun foam. I've got the little frog popped up on fun foam and the little speech bubble and the little umbrella is adhered directly down. So the sixth card is again, same design, different elements. And I like doing that because then, at least for the second one, I don't have to think through the process. But one reason I do love these collections is that it's almost therapeutically relaxing to just, everything's ready for you. And so all you have to do is just start layering and adhering and arranging things until you like them and you instantly have several easy made cards. For card seven, I'm taking a panel that's slightly smaller than an A2 sized card base and I've adhered it directly down and then I'm taking a strip of the cardstock, that light blue cardstock and adhering it in the middle. And then, of course, I'll pop up the sentiment and my little focal point image and the sun, and I can adhere those directly down. Trim off any of the access that's overhanging. And just for a little bit embellishment, I've added two little cardstock cards that I'm directly adhering to the panel. And that is the seventh card. So for this card, I picked out probably my least favorite color in the world. And for me, in order to tone down that brightness of the orange, I thought to use a, like a soft purple. And I think those two complemented each other well. And so I just took the orange panel and adhered it directly down to the card base. And then I took the strip of the light purple cardstock and adhered it across that panel. And then I could just start adding in my focal point elements and line them up as straight as I possibly can. And then add my little banner. I've added a couple of the die cut hearts and then I'm taking, I do not know what this tool is, but I'm gluing it in place to complete this card. So card nine, I think is my most favorite card of all of the cards I did. I took a piece of black cardstock and I've adhered it to my card base. And then I've die cut a stitched scallop circle from some pink cardstock. I'm gluing the sentiment in place and then I'm going to bring in some of those doodle pops in. This is the one with the vase and the flowers and 
that's all I really needed on this card. I do go ahead and add a couple of the enamel dots and that is the finished card. For this card I took a rather busy background and I thought what better way to take away some of that brightness of that background but to add a brighter piece of cardstock on top. So I die cut a piece of the pink cardstock with a stitch scallop rectangle and then I've matted it onto a piece of black cardstock and then I can start arranging my elements into place. I am using a couple of the doodle pops with that bee and the ladybug. I'm adding a speech bubble and then the big sentiment I've popped up onto some fun foam and I've adhered that in place and just added a couple of those flowers from that same pack. So moving right along to card 11. For this one I decided to bring in a stitched fishtail flag die as one of my components. And I've die cut that pink cardstock with the fishtail die. And then I am going to mat it to some black cardstock. I think that will definitely help separate the two layers. Once I have that adhered, I can just trim off the excess of the black card. And then I've also die cut a stitched circle from the teal cardstock, which I will adhere to the center of the entire card panel. I'm just trimming off any of the overhanging. And then I take in my elements. I've got the sentiment popped up on some fun foam that I've adhered down. I've got my little girl that's popped up also on some fun foam, the little bird, and the little speech bubble. And that will complete that card. The next card, I've got the purple cardstock die cut, or not purple, that one is pattern paper from the collection. So I'm adhering another banner. I'm also adding the black mat around that banner. Once I adhere that into place, I can trim off any of the excess. And then I can take my circle die cut and adhere that to the center of the card base. I've got my little tree popped up on fun foam and part of the sentiment is adhered across that element and so part of it will just be popped up so that it's nice and even. And then to finish that card, I'm just going to add the little butterfly and that is a completed card. So at this point, I wanted to go through and show you how I use up some of these little pieces, these weird off cuts. And one way I do that is I use dies like window dies to die cut large cardstock and then I can just add those pattern papers as sort of focal images. For this card I've die cut a square peekaboo window from the pink cardstock and I've adhered the pattern paper directly down to the card base. I've got the pink cardstock panel popped up on some fun foam and I can adhere that directly down and then all there was left to do was arrange my images and adhere those into place. For this one I picked the little bee and a little turtle and the sentiment and then I changed my mind about that speech bubble because I felt it would just cover up the pattern paper a little too much. 
So here's the next card. I've die cut the blue cardstock using a stitched interactive window trio die. This one is by MFT, but you can honestly just cut these elements out with a paper trimmer or scissors. All you need is a good ruler to hand draw these shapes and then some either good scissors or good paper trimmer to, to cut these shapes out. So you really don't need these special dies that I've been using. Anyway, I've got the little pieces of pattern paper cut and adhered to where the openings are. And then the main panel is popped up on fun foam. And then I just adhere that into place. And then to complete this card, I've just chosen a couple of the images. I've popped them up on some fun foam and then I can start adhering them where I think they kind of look good and they won't cover up too much of that pattern paper. And the sentiment for this one is also popped up on fun foam and it's happy springtime. I guess I do go ahead and embellish this card with a couple of the die cut pieces. And there's kind of what's all that's left over. And for the last card, I do go ahead and bring in this peekaboo backdrop die by Lawn Fawn. So what I love about this die is it cuts out the frame, but it also cuts out these windows that are that can be interactive. None of which I use, of course, but I do love that die for that fact. So I'm still working on these little tiny pieces. And once I have cut the frame with some black cardstock, I'm using up some of those pieces and just tracing the outline of it. And then I trim it off just a little bit bigger than that outline. And then I can just go ahead and erase the pencil marks. So I do go ahead and cut four different ones. And then I can just start adhering them. I found it best to adhere with liquid glue directly down onto the frame. I think I kind of picked out some complementary colors, although the entire collection is complementary, so it's hard to not pick out some really good elements. Once I have all of those adhered, I do go ahead and cut another black cardstock frame from using that same die. And then for this top one, I will pop it up with some foam. This is Foam Strips by Doris, and I love these because they're so thin and they really fit well onto a frame like this. So once I have all of those pieces in place, I can go ahead and remove the backing. And then the hard part is trying to line that up straight, which I don't do, but it's it's a little bit difficult to tell because the the bottom frame is also a piece of black cardstock. Anyway, to complete this card, I am taking some of the elements that I had left over and I'm adhering those into those little openings. I've got the two little hedgehogs popped up on fun foam. I have the sentiment partially popped up on fun foam and the two little birds and then the cloud. I'm trimming most of that off because I want the sunshine pattern paper to be visible. 
And once I adhere that flat, I change my mind and I pop that up on Fun Foam. And that would complete all of the 15 cards I made using this one collection. So here are some close-ups of all of the cards that I made using this collection by Doodlebug. I'll leave a link to all of the products that I used in this video in the description area below. Also let me know in the comments below what is the favorite card from this collection. I think mine is, well it's really hard just to pick one, but you know Doodlebug makes really, really cute designs. So, But I think for me it would definitely be, I believe it was card 9. It's the one with the flowers that are in the vase and it's a Doodle Pop sticker. This one. I think that one is definitely my favorite. Anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos and commenting and liking. It's really appreciated and it helps me to grow my channel. If you do like the content I make and are new here, please consider subscribing to further support me. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.